Hey guys, welcome back. So before I get started on this video, I do want to point out one thing. I got myself a microphone. It was a cheap Amazon microphone, but hopefully you're able to hear me better. And I apologize for all the previous videos where you couldn't hear a thing I was saying. Um, okay, today's topic is going to be preparing or kind of setting your mind at ease for some kind of nuclear event. Um, not going to claim to be a professional by any means on this matter. I've done a video on it before, a much more detailed video, uh, but I wanted to make another one in light of everything that's going on in the world and all the talk of nuclear. Um, I've said this before. I think it could be a bunch of fear mongering, but apparently governments and other um, organizations don't think it's so much fear mongering and they're taking it seriously, especially um, overseas, there are government agencies that are taking it very seriously. So just to kind of set my mind at ease and make me feel more comfortable. Um, there's just some steps that I'm taking and um, lists that I'm creating, plans that I'm, you know, putting into place to make me feel better about it. I live in Florida. There's no basements. Okay. Um, I live right by the beach. There's no digging down and making myself a bunker. I, my house is not brick. It's just, um, you know, standard wood construction like plastic paneling. I don't have much insulation. Um, from my research, apparently, the more space that you can put in between you and the nuclear uh, radiation or nuclear dust outside, um, the more space and the more matter that you can put in between yourself and the outside, it, the better. Um, so I've found a central location in my house and I, I kind of tweak this plan, um, you know, the more research that I've been doing, but I have a hallway slash bathroom in the center of my house over there. It is the furthest out from all of the outside walls and windows um, than any other space in my house. So I kind of cordoned off and measured out this little space over here that would be our living space for two weeks. <laughs> Me, my dog, and my son. Um, it won't be fun, but heck, it's survival. <laughs> um, you want to put as much space and matter in between you and the outside. Like I said, if you have a basement, you're, you're lucky. That's a very good place to be. But basically I have, and I'm not, I'm not going to film it, but there's a hallway right in front of me over there. And I have measured out um, all the doorways that it connects to. I will be putting up plastic sheeting on those doorways just so that if anything comes from the windows in those rooms, it's not coming into my living space. Um, I also have a plan to take my two piece sectional and turn it upright to create a wall because I won't be blocked off on all corners. There's one spot that's open to the rest of my living room. I'm gonna take that sectional, I'm gonna create some uh, space in between me and the outside, just building up matter, you know? Um, I guess concrete, sand, furniture, uh, bags of dirt. I mean, anything that you can put in between you and the outside as much as possible, just, just creating a bigger distance um, is basically what I have read is going to help. So um, I feel like I'm rambling right now. Let me just get to my list. <laughs> okay. So First step is going to be shut off the AC. Just, just shut it off entirely. Make sure it's not flowing and sucking outside air in. Um, I'm going to be, and I have measured, if you can see this. I have measured all of the doorways, windows, vents, and everything. Um, the size that I'm going to need to cut plastic sheeting to cover those up. So I'll be covering up the vents. Anything that um, has movement from the outside to inside, even if the AC is off, I'm going to be covering up vents, doorways, windows, and I'm going to have my pre-cut plastic sheets ready, labeled for where they go um, to the proper size, and I'm going to have them in an area close to that door or window or vent that I'm going to be covering up. So I have all my measurements taken here. I have my six mil plastic sheeting. Uh, this is 250 square feet. I don't know for certain that it's going to um, cover all the doors and windows in my house. Um, I'll get more if I have to, but I got this um, at Walmart for like 17 to $20, somewhere around there. Um, I have a staple gun. 
So my plan is, you know, it's kind of hard to hold up plastic sheathing and tape it if you're kind of like one person doing it on your own. My son should help me, but I'm thinking it's going to be easier to just kind of staple it in place. And then from there, get my duct tape and create a nice good seal all the way around with duct tape. Make sure you don't go cheap on your duct tape. Don't get the Dollar Tree duct tape for this purpose. Um, this is Gorilla Tape, duct tape. And this stuff is incredibly, incredibly strong. So that's what I'm going with. Um, so as many doors and windows as I can, we're working on a limited time frame here. So within 30 minutes, um, I want to make sure that my immediate living space is taken care of. And then I'll work on all the other doors and windows if I have time. But also in that time, um, I need to get my son's twin mattress. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that. That's going to be in the hallway. That and some blankets. That's what we're going to be sleeping on. Um, I don't. This isn't in any particular order, but baby wipes just to keep us clean over the next two weeks. Um, I have a little air filter. If I can run it on my um, solar generator, um, I'm going to I'm going to bring that generator into the room. Uh, but I have a little HEPA air filter. If I can run that for a little bit, just in case it's not very big at all. I'm going to bring that in too. Um, potassium iodide. If you don't already have this stuff, um, don't wait until it's too late because some places in like the European nations are having a hard time getting a hold of this. The government's buying it up. Everyone's buying it up. If you don't get potassium iodide now and have it in your house and know how much you need, um, it might be too late. You, you can still find it on Amazon. Um, if not the IOSAT brand, there is a couple other brands or even generic potassium iodide. Um, for adults over 150 pounds, you're going to take one of these 130 milligram tablets per day, um, two weeks to be safe. If you're under 150 pounds or a child, you're going to take half of a tablet uh, per day for two weeks. So I've, I've allotted enough of this for my son and I and even some family members that I don't think they know that I'm prepping for them, but they live very close to me. So if they wind up here, I'll be able to take care of them. Um, a radio. So my emergency radio that has all the like emergency broadcast systems and stuff, the NOAA radio, I'm going to bring that in the USB cables for recharging a battery powered lantern, flashlights, batteries, uh, lighters for candles. I don't want to be burning candles too much, actually, because um, if everything's sealed off and there's no ventilation or circulation, I just think that not having um, fire or something that's consuming more of your oxygen is probably a good idea. Um, thought of this at the last minute, though. If you are sealing everything off, a lot of people say, how are you going to live? Um, there's actually a calculation online for how much um, oxygen you will consume and how long you can live. And for two weeks, you'll be totally fine. But I want to bring a plant in there with me because the plant will help, uh, you know, consume my carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. I don't know. I always get them mixed up and then it's going to produce for me. Okay. I have my potty bucket that I'm going to be bringing in there. Um, it has all sorts of garbage bags, Ziploc bags, toilet paper, potty pads for my dog. So this is going to be a really nasty situation for two weeks. Um, I have planned that I'm going to turn the bathtub in that bathroom in our living quarters into a potty area for my dog. So I'm going to put the potty pads down in the bathtub. Hopefully he'll cooperate with that. And then I have all sorts of Ziploc bags and my potty bucket that I'm going to be able to seal everything up and keep it like contained so that the smell isn't bothering us. Um, I don't know how well that plan is going to work, but um, if you've seen my potty bucket video that I did, you, you kind of know what's in the potty bucket. There's kitty litter, um, a little noodle that I use to line the top of a five gallon bucket so you can sit on it. And the reason I did that, yes, we're going to be in a bathroom. But if there's some kind of an attack, I don't know if the sewage systems are going to be working at all so that I can flush the toilet that's in there. Um, it might not be worth the risk trying to flush it and the sewage systems are back up and then we're stuck in this area for two weeks with a backed up toilet. Um, so 
yeah, there's a toilet there. I don't know how long it's going to be working. So I'm bringing the potty bucket. Um, dog food for my dog, obviously. Um, I am calculating two to three cases of water that I'm going to grab and put in our little living area. And I'm just going to be grabbing all this stuff and kind of throwing it in that living area. Um, I know where everything is. I kind of planned this out and did like a little walkthrough of how fast I could grab this stuff. Um, I have three bug out bags in my um, hallway room over there. It's kind of like my prepper pantry closet room now. But if I grab all three of those, I have just about all the supplies I could possibly need. First aid kit, um, my jet boil and the fuel for my jet boil so that I can heat things up. I have at least two weeks worth of Mountain House meals in there. Um, so if I grab those backpacks and putting it in our, put it in our living quarters, we should be good. But I'm going to grab a few like um, beefaroni type Chef Boyardee meals as well. Um, just things to eat quickly. Um, let's see. Utensils. Some, just something, some kind of a spoon or something to eat with. We can eat out of the can or out of my jet boil um, canister. Um, I have the DuPont chemical biological suits. If we're in there, I don't think I'm going to need them, but I'm going to have them in there anyway, just in case at some point we want to leave and we don't know, you know, what things are looking like. Um, also from Mira Safety, um, I got these, this, this is my mask, full uh, face shield. You can see it's very easy to see out of. Um, this is mine. This is my son's. We tested these. We tried them on. We fitted them. They are ready to pull on and use. The only thing is, um, since I bought these, my son's face has grown quite a bit. And now this kid one is almost too small. Like it's okay right now. It's, it fits him. He's going to have a little more limited of a view because this um, face shield is smaller. But right now it fits him. In the next year, even six months, I'll probably have to buy him an adult one because he's just growing so fast. Um, but these coupled with the filters, um, this is the NBC 77 filter. Um, these are going to screw on to the side over here or for him, it screws on right here. But this will allow us to, if we have to go out and explore and be able to breathe in filtered air um, just to see if everything's clear. We will be taking our IOSAT. Um, I also have some apple pectin um, that, that we will be taking. Um, if you guys are interested, these are not cheap. I'm not saying that this is something, you know, that everybody can afford or it's within their budget. But if you are already in a place where you have enough food stored, you have enough water stored, um, you are in a financial place that you can invest in these, it gives me great peace of mind to know that I have them just in case, especially with everything going on in the world. Um, I will have a link down below for Mira Safety, who I'm an affiliate with, um, if you decide that you want to invest in these. Another thing, don't wait on them. If you want to get them and you think that it's within your budget, don't wait and put it off because I guarantee you there is a long wait list for them or that supplies are running limited. That is about it. Um, so just having written this down and kind of played out the situation in my mind, it makes me feel a lot better that I at least have a plan in place. It's not impossible to survive after a nuclear incident. So don't get this like doom and gloom idea of I'm just going to die. I'm going to lay down and give up. If you have a few simple plans in place, you can greatly increase your chance of survival. Plastic sheeting, duct tape, potassium iodide, gas masks and filters. And if you have a basement, all the better. Um, but you can definitely increase your chances of survival by doing a few simple things and it, it'll give you peace of mind. So don't give up. Um, plan for these things, make a list. If you can't afford to buy the gas masks and stuff, at least secure and plan to have a secure place in your home where you can go. This plastic sheeting is cheap. Duct tape is cheap. You can afford that. They make very affordable potassium iodide that they are still selling on Amazon. I'll also link that down below. Very affordable. 
So if you can take these few steps to make your family feel a little bit better about what's going on in the world, go ahead and do it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.